In this instant design challenge, you and your team are to design, build, and test an ankle brace called an ankle foot orthosis for a group of patients in need. Before we begin, let's learn a little bit about who you are designing this orthosis for. Your patients have a condition known as cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy, called CP for short, is a condition that affects body movement and coordination. The word cerebral means having to do with the brain, and the word palsy means a weakness or problem with using muscles. Let's learn more about this condition from our expert, Dr. Driscoll, a physician from Mayo Clinic. Cerebral palsy is a group of disorders that affect a child um, in their movement and their posture and their coordination. It's typically something that is non-progressive, meaning it does not get worse over the years. Uh, there are potentially a number of causes of cerebral palsy, and those causes can be anywhere from not enough oxygen getting to the brain, to bleeding inside the brain, to infection, uh, to other sorts of genetic malformations of the brain, meaning the brain doesn't form correctly. Cerebral palsy doesn't necessarily have to occur before the time of birth. It most commonly does, but it doesn't, it doesn't always have to. We will usually consider um, a brain injury before the age of two resulting in a disorder of movement and posture in within the category of cerebral palsy. When we classify uh, cerebral palsy in children, we often think about a couple of different things. One is which part of the body is affected. For some children, they'll have one entire side of the body affected. We call that hemiparesis if it's weakness or hemiplegia if it's a very significant weakness. So other kids will just have their legs be affected. Uh, we call that diplegia. And then other kids will have all four limbs affected and that's termed quadriplegia. The presentation of CP really depends on which part of the brain is affected. And so, um, obviously, if a large portion of the brain is affected, it's more likely that your whole body will be affected um, as a result. But if the initial injury to the brain is very small, then it will just be one little part of you that is different. For this instant design challenge, your patients have what is called spastic hemiplegia. This means that they have stiff muscles, or spasticity, in one side of their body. Usually their arm is more affected than their leg. There are different kinds of spastic hemiplegia. In the case of your patients, the muscles in the back of their affected legs are tight and contracted. This causes an abnormal foot position and stance. Due to the contraction of these leg muscles, patients typically walk on their toes and therefore have an irregular walking pattern. Walking on your toes throughout childhood can have negative consequences on the unaffected ankle and cause limited range of movement. This means that over time, the unaffected ankle might not be able to function properly. For children with this condition, a common treatment is an ankle foot orthosis. Orthosis is the medical term for any splint, brace, or wrap used to support a weak or deformed body part or to restrict or eliminate motion in a diseased or injured part of the body. Some examples of orthoses you might be familiar with are knee braces for knee injuries, back braces for people with scoliosis, and finger splints for broken finger bones. The ankle foot orthoses used with children who walk on their toes are meant to help stabilize and strengthen the muscles and joints of the foot and ankle. The orthosis that you design needs to limit the irregular movements your patients demonstrate so that their muscles and joints can develop correctly and they can relearn how to walk properly. You will work with your teammates to design, build, and test a model ankle foot orthosis for your patients. As you plan, build, and test your design, make sure that you meet the following requirements for your patients. The orthosis needs to attach to the patient's foot and lower leg and support the foot and ankle, including the heel and arch of the foot. The orthosis needs to allow upward movement at the ankle. The orthosis needs to allow the patient to place their foot flat on the floor when standing. And the orthosis needs to prevent any downward movement at the ankle from the neutral position where the foot is parallel with the floor. This means that the orthosis will stop the patient from pointing or raising up on their toes. Remember, your patient has to wear this, so the orthosis needs to be comfortable and also removable. 
Good luck and have fun as you work through this challenge.